Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this episode I'm going to sh show you how to add uh, back button support to your web pages. Um, I'm going to take uh, one of the older uh, jQuery for Designers tutorials, the tab system, and I'm going to add uh, a, a plugin by Cowboy Ben Orman um, called Barbecue, or yeah, back button and query. So maybe a backronym. Um, also, it's been a while since the last uh, screencast. Um, I've been working hard on uh, writing at the moment. So um, this is a this is one of the items that's going to go into the uh, the Jake Rupert Designers book. Um, and I just wanted to kind of live, well, uh, kind of semi live code it in front of you guys. Um, so I've not actually I've not used this plugin yet. I'm literally going to learn in front of you. Um, I will edit it down so you're not listening to too much of my rambling, even though you probably have already. Um, and because I've upgraded my software as well as I mentioned, I went from I show you to ScreenFlow, it means that you're probably able to see uh, my mug. That's not the only reason to upgrade, um, but it allowed me a bit more editing control. So, with that, let's crack straight into it. Um, the starting point is the uh, the old uh, tabs.html. So this is the tabs.html. Um, I've just stripped it down to be kind of a bit more HTML5, uh, like a, a, a minified doc type and so on. Um, and if we just pop this up into the browser, and in fact, actually, I probably want it in uh, probably want it in Firefox. So I'm just going to open Firefox as well. So this is what it looks like. Um, if you remember it, oh god, go away. And I can just tap each of these uh, first, second, and third, and it will give me uh, the tab associated with it. Um, no, let's get Firefox going. So, right. Um, actually, let's not use Firefox. Let's use Safari for a change. Anyway, this is Ben Ullman's website. Um, if you search for jQuery Barbecue, you should get the uh, the plugin. Yep, there you go at the front, at the top rather. And um, looking over the documentation, uh, or certainly this web page, there's a hell of a lot going on. Um, and to be fair, I think if you're a designer, you're not really going to worry about I'm not going to want to worry about everything that's on here. Um, and to be fair, in in my I mean, my problem was I want to add uh, uh, back button support to my tabs. That's all I want, and um, it took me a little while to find exactly where I'm, I needed to go. Um, but I'm pretty certain I need somewhere much further down here. So I'm going to show you how to rewrite the uh, the tabs page to work with uh, Ben's plugin. So. First thing is I've downloaded the Minify version. I downloaded his barbecue plugin, which is there. Um, and if I pop it open in Safari, let's get our debug menu turned on. Advanced. There we go. Uh, show web inspector. So we should be pulling in. Yep, there's barbecue. Okay, now the the way that this tabbing system works is that when you click on a link here, uh, oh, I've also got this uh, this new plugin, this thing. When you click on a link, um, it executes this code in this section. Okay, so that's the trick. So when I click on a link, it shows me the the appropriate tab. Now with the barbecue plugin, what happens is when you click on a link, so this bit here, when you click on a link, you need to push that URL into the barbecue plugin. And then uh, on the other side, this event fires, hash change, and you grab the URL that you pushed into the barbecue, you pull it back out again, and then you act with that. Okay, so you're, you're instead of running this code when the user clicks, you're you're doing the um, you're you're passing the URL into the barbecue plugin, and the barbecue plugin will notify your code that something has changed, and then you run this bit of code that I just highlighted. So it's it's a little bit of a head shift, but if you watch what I do, hopefully this will work. So let's um, let's take this out. 
let's just copy and paste it and put it into and what does Ben have? Uh, window.bind hash change. So window.bind hash change function. Okay, so we've got tab containers up there, uh, filters. So let's uh, let's grab this. So right, we we don't actually need the whole href scope. So what what the, the example is doing is grabbing the href off the link. But if you remember from the tabs, what we're actually using is this dot hash, and this dot hash is this bit here. Okay, so it's it's the bit that appears on the the window. If you look at the, um, oh, I won't be able to show you, but down in the bottom of the uh, the screen, um, you've got third, second, and third. Sorry, first, second, and third. Um, and this is the hash. This part here, including the hash symbol. So let's uh, push state. So what's Ben? Ben get get state URL. So I assume that must be a key. So this is a key here, and this is a value. Um, so let's call this hash, and let's do this dot hash. That looks okay. Um, I'm going to just comment out the filter dot first. So what this filter dot first bit did was um, find the first link and click it, so that the the actual uh, selection would happen. So now, um, when the hash change fires. His code says go and loop around and, and find uh, the one that um, you want to show. But what we can do here is uh, var hash equals, and we want to do barbecue get state. Get state, and we called it hash, so let's pass in hash. I'll tell you what, at this point, let's do an alert that shows the hash. And let's comment out the rest of this code for the time being. Um, Oh, the other thing is he's preventing the default click handler inside of the uh, the link click, which we actually had before, um, but I'd commented that out just to try something. So, not true, false. So, we haven't modified the code too much at this point. Um, we've got our links being clicked here. Okay, uh, we push the hash onto this uh, barbecue plugin, and we look for this hash change event and uh, we get the state of hash and alert it out. So let's see if this works. Um, I think actually there's one last bit. Yes, yeah, so we need to do window trigger hash change. So what that will do is fire it once the first time. So let's have a look. Undefined. So the first time it fires, this is undefined because you haven't set it. Okay, so that makes sense. Let's um, let's get rid of that for the time being. Let's click on second, cool. Third. Okay, something weird's going up on going on up in the uh, the URL. Let's let's change that and load it fresh. So if I click on the back button now, we are getting. I mean, something's happening basically. I'm not. I'm not going to press what's happening. But so this is good. We're getting the uh, the hash. So let's um, let's just uncomment the code we used to have. Let's get rid of that false bit. And um, so tab containers. This is hide all the tab containers. Great. Um, now filter down to the hash, so let's get rid of this dot, so we just have the hash which matches this variable here, dot show, um, removes class, uh, the selected class from all of the links, and then we do this dot add class selected. So this isn't going to work because this is the uh, uh, the link we've just clipped, but maybe we can change it, change, take these two lines of code and put it up here, because that's when the, the link is clicked. So let's, uh, no, 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 but that's not going to work. Uh, right, I'll, I'll run this code and I'll show you why this isn't going to work. Um, I'm saying that when you click on a link, we uh, we update the uh, selected tab. Let's refresh it. Okay, so that's good. But if we hit back, see we're now on the third tab, but the third tab hasn't been selected. So actually we need to have everything that, go, that um, is to do with the actual tab being clicked 
inside of the, um, the hash change event. So let's take that out and put that back in. And we need to find a way of finding this. So we need to find a way of the link that's, that was actually clicked. Now what we do have is the hash. And the hash is unique to our link here. So we can use that to search for the link. So let's change that to um, A. And if we do hash equals, we can pass in the hash here. And um, we're, we've now got a, a jQuery selector to search for um, all the anchors and then filter it down to say uh, where the hash is equal to this hash text. So let me stick this into uh, the console. Oops, develop uh, show inspector. Oh, I should really get the next version. So this is the console. Uh, there's jQuery. So if I do um, dollar a hash equals, let's change this to first. Oops, with a hash in front of it. Let's do dot length to see if uh, we actually have. So we've got one. That's great. And if I change to second, we should have one as well. Perfect. That looks like that selector does work. Um, so now if I run this code, I click on it and nothing happens. Right, so let's bring up the inspector. Oh, no, I wasn't clicking on it. There we go. Let's just refresh up make sure. Third, second. Okay, so clicking works. Click back, forward, okay, that's good. So the last thing we're missing is having the hash actually work. Um, so I think we can put this back in. Okay, so I put it back in, I save it and refresh. And what you should see is the URL changes, but this hasn't changed. The reason is, it's because these two are the wrong way around. This is saying filter for the first one and click. It runs this code, which sends this event, but this code hasn't hasn't been set up yet. So we need to move this, all the setup to uh, the line above. Save it, and let's. There you go. Okay, let's try and just open that in a new tab and change that to third. That doesn't work. Um, well, I guess this is what this is for. So let's comment out our filter first. Let's take this, close the window, open a new one. Okay, cool, that works. The problem is it doesn't work without the, uh, the oh, blimey, that doesn't work without the hash at the beginning at all. Um, so what we can do is default. So here, I bet you, this is, uh, we, we know actually, we've already seen this, alert uh, is undefined. So, let's say uh, if hash is equal to undefined, okay, I've done three, but you can do two here hash equals first, okay? Or you could do, um, uh, do we have the links? We could do tab containers dot filter, uh, I think we can do equal one, uh, no, sorry, dot attribute ID, that, no. Uh, let's, let's just hard code it for the time being. There we go, first. So, run it, we get the first one selected. I would like to know how to uh, to make this so it actually shows just second. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have another read through the rest of this, uh, this page, see if I can find it. And I'm going to put you on pause and come back. Okay, hi, welcome back. Um, I have worked it out. It, uh, it may be in the documentation somewhere, but I couldn't find it, but I have worked out how to get the URL to look pretty. So, uh, let's go back to our demo tabs. Now, the problem is uh, the hash at the top here is uh, rather nasty looking. So, what I've worked out, or I've, I've worked out what you need to do, is instead of pushing this state on, you get rid of all this all together, and you just let the uh, the hash change. The thing where the URL changes, 
listen out for when that, that changes and just use that to drive the oil code. So the first thing is, let's get rid of that. The next thing is, instead of this barbecue get state, which is just a, it's like a database, I guess, um, you need to use um, Ben's uh, query param thing. Uh, D param fragment. Actually, we're going to just try doing window.location.hash. Let's give that a try. Let's just alert out uh, hash. Okay, so let's get rid of this blank second. Oh, you see, this now looks like it's going to work. Okay, so I'm, I'm not even using the, um, the dollar param kind of magic, I'm just using hash. Now, the problem is the first time we load it up, when there's no hash, it's blank. So I'm just going to do or first. And I get rid of this code. Now let's refresh this. We've got the first one, second, third. This is good. Let's go back to second, third. Let's hit the back button a few times. Go forward. Awesome. So that's how to add uh, back button support to uh, your, your tabbing system or something that uses the hash. Um, looks like it's a pretty good plugin. Um, obviously, uh, check it out in the other browsers. Um, I know that it has, it has very good support in the first place. Um, I will be checking it in the other browsers as well to be absolutely sure. Um, but this seems to do the trick, so uh, good solution. If you have any questions, um, drop a comment on jcrewforddesigns.com and hopefully I'll try to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching.